Let's talk about load factor. Chapter 1, section 10 in your book. The definition of load factor is the airplane's lift divided by the airplane's weight. We can change load factor by changing either one of these two variables, lift and weight. Let's think back to how lift is generated. We talked about this earlier. We've got airflow coming over the wing. And as the air accelerates over the wing, we've got a low pressure area here. We've got a high pressure area here at the bottom. The result is that we get lift generated, and this lift is what counteracts the gravity or the weight on the airplane. Think of this in terms of G's. If lift and weight are in equilibrium, then we've got 1G. If lift is twice the value of weight, then we would have 2G's. And as lift increases beyond that value, we would increase our load factor, or we would increase our number of G's. Um, and it would be dependent upon the different variables that affect the lift and the different variables that affect the weight. Now, these, uh, this load factor is closely related to the aircraft speed and the bank angle of the wings. So we're going to have two uh, quick conversations. We'll get into the speed first. Um, imagine for a moment that you're sitting at the end of the runway. You're about to take off, but you haven't started your takeoff roll yet. Well, at this moment, the aircraft's weight exceeds the aircraft's lift. Uh, we apply power, we begin to roll down the runway, and we begin with zero speed, and, and we begin accelerating towards VR, which is our rotation speed. Now we know that there are speeds uh, for the stall, speeds that will let us know when the airplane stalls. Of course, the stall happens when the wings uh, reach their critical angle of attack and no longer produce lift. Um, but the airplane can stall, can fly at speeds above the stall speed below the uh, rotation speed, right? So as we begin at zero and accelerate through 10 knots, 20 knots, 30 knots, um, what's happening is we've, we're starting to get airflow over the wings and we get a little bit of lift but not enough to overcome the weight. Uh, we get a little bit more lift, not enough to overcome weight. And then at some point we reach uh, VSO. VSO is the stall speed and landing configuration. And we're probably not going to have our flaps fully extended at this point, so we, we will accelerate right through VSO. And we will continue to accelerate, generating more and more lift until we reach uh, VS1. Now at VS1, or let's say one knot over VS1, the airplane's got the ability to fly. But if we pull back on the yoke and leave the ground, we're going to be so close to the stall speed that what likely will happen is that the airplane will stall and settle immediately back to the ground. As we accelerate beyond VS1 to our published rotational speed, VR, this gives us enough lift that we can safely pull back on the yoke, begin to fly, and we've got the airspeed we need that gives us a safe cushion uh, between the stall speed and our rotation speed. Now typically we rotate at a certain speed, say 55, and then as we climb we'll continue to accelerate to a faster speed. And as we accelerate the lift continues to increase all the while. Now as the lift increases uh, and we're beginning to climb, at that point lift opposes weight. So we could say that we've got a positive load factor. It's typically a pretty low load factor though. In fact, um, flying by the seat of your pants, you'll feel, you'll feel the G forces if you get into a situation where they're significant. For instance, um, commercial pilot PTS calls for steep turns to be performed at 60 degrees of bank uh, and maintaining altitude plus or minus 100 feet. So if you're maintaining uh, consistent altitude and you're turning the airplane around with a 60 degree uh, bank, then you'll feel two Gs. It would be unusual in normal operations to go beyond this number. Let's imagine that we just continue accelerating and the lift continues increasing all the way up 
to the red line on our airspeed indicator. The red line on the airspeed indicator is a number that we call VNE. Now at VNE, the wings have such tremendous airflow flowing over them that they're producing a ton of lift. And when the wings are producing this much lift, it wouldn't be hard to put a control force in that would allow the airplane to suffer structural damage. So we limit the speed of the airplane to a safe speed, and that's what VNE is. Um, but it, it's pretty logical if you think about it. The, the more airflow that we've got over the wings, the more lift the wings are going to generate. The more lift is generated, that's this variable here, the higher the load factor is going to be because the weight typically is not going to change drastically. You know, we're going to uh, decrease the weight throughout the flight for the fuel burn, and that's going to be a slow and gradual deduction. But we can have uh, tremendous increases in lift based on variances in speed. So that's the first factor, speed. <clears throat> now, load factor is also affected by bank. Right here we've got a drawing of a wing in straight and level flight, and in this condition, 100% of the lift that this wing is generating is going towards uh, keeping the airplane in the air. The lift is in the vertical direction. But when we put the airplane into a bank, like this wing here, our lift is then divided. We've got two components. We've got the horizontal component of lift, and we've got the, I'm sorry, this is the, we've got the vertical component of lift, and then over here we've got the horizontal component of lift. Now, all things being equal, if we, if we put the airplane into a bank, and we trade some of our vertical component of lift for a horizontal component of lift, the airplane will begin to turn, but it would also begin to descend. Uh, most of the time, that's not what we want, so when we put the airplane into the bank, we apply some back pressure to keep the nose up. So what happens is we increase the vertical component of lift to compensate for the loss of lift, and that lift was lost uh, because of the increase in the horizontal component of lift. The resultant, if you will, we go back to trigonometry here. The resultant is this vector right here. And that's going to be uh, a greater amount of lift than would be required to maintain the airplane in straight and level flight. And so in level flight, and that's the key there, you know, we could crank it over into a bank and just let the nose drop and let the airplane begin to fall. And we may not see an increase in lift. And we may not see an increase in load factor. But assuming that we're holding the airplane in level flight, then if we put it into a bank, we're going to have an increase in lift and therefore an increase in load factor. So speed and bank are two very important um, factors, variables, in the discussion of load factor. Now, this bottom question, how does this affect the stall characteristics? And I wrote a note on this slide. Although the wing will only stall at its specific critical angle of attack, an increase in load factor will allow the wing to reach that angle at a higher airspeed. Which makes sense. We've got more lift being generated. Those stall speeds published are, are based on, um, you know, straight and level flight. Typically at, at low airspeeds, at the speeds close to the stall airspeed. Um, at some point in your private pilot training, though, your CFI will demonstrate some alternate stall configurations where you can actually stall the airplane at a higher speed. Um, one classic example of this is uh, stalling the airplane at a high angle of bank. You could put it into a steep turn. You've got an airspeed that is significantly higher than your VSO or your VS1 speed. And if you pull back hard enough on the yoke, the first thing that you'll notice is the seat, the weight in the seat of your pants, and that's the the g the g load. Um, we talked about with an increase in load factor. The second thing you'll notice is that you will begin to get a stall horn sometimes at an alarmingly high airspeed. So while the critical angle of attack of the wing never changes, we can actually stall the airplane at any airspeed, and that can be dependent on load factor. All right, so again, load factor, the two variables are lift and weight. 
and then the two um, most important variables uh, that affect load factor are speed, the speed of the aircraft, and that's relate, directly related to the airflow over the wing and how much lift that wing is able to generate at a variety of air speeds, all the way from zero knots all the way up to the never exceed speed, V and E, the red line on your airspeed indicator, and bank from wings level all the way to increasingly high angles of bank. Now, there are three questions here. Uh, and they deal with a performance chart and I've put this chart together it's almost identical so what we see here is we've got the bank angle over here and so it starts with the bank angle of 0 load factor of 1 now as we increase our bank angle 10, 20, 30, 45, 60 we see an increase in load factor and if you follow the line over here on the chart so so the bank angle here, 0, the load factor 1, that's a point here. Each one of these uh, intersecting values is a point on this chart. And so you'll see that the load factor increases very gradually up to about 45 degrees of bank. Beyond 45 degrees of bank, the increase in load factor becomes exponential. So really beyond 60. And if you look, 60 is kind of a key number. You can see that... On, on both places with the points with the uh, the actual numbers over here and the lines on the chart 60 is uh, that's a key number beyond 60 the the increase in load factor is very high uh, for an increase in angle of bank and uh, also that's that's the point where you're going to experience a load factor of two G's now so the way the problems that go with this chart in the book work is they're going to give you a theoretical aircraft weight and bank and so this is easy easy stuff let's just go with the first question so you've got an airplane that weighs 2300 pounds the airplane is in a 60 degree bank that's a load factor of 2 so we multiply 2 and bam there's our answer 4600 pounds what this means is if a 2300 pound airplane were in a 60 degree bank in straight and level flight the airplane still weighs 2300 pounds but the lift that the wings are responsible of producing to keep that airplane in level flight well I say level flight yeah it's level flight it's not straight flight we're turning but we're maintaining altitude so we've got 4600 pounds of lift being generated 4,600 pounds of lift and 2,300 pounds of aircraft weight equals a load factor of 2, or 2 Gs. Uh, you can go through the rest of these. They're pretty simple. Uh, just to give an example of how this would work, though, maybe for some oddball numbers, let's, uh, let's, let's think about a heavier airplane. The airplane that I fly has got a max gross weight of 28,000 pounds. So let's take my airplane and put it in a 30-degree bank. All right, so 30 degrees of bank. We're looking at a 1.154 load factor, and so that's going to be 32,000. 32, so if the question were, the question would be worded something like this. If an airplane weighs 28,000 pounds, then what approximate weight would the airplane structure be required to support during a 30 degree bank turn? And the answer would be 32,312 pounds. Um, let's look at a, a crazy number uh, on the bank side. So let's say we've got a 1,500 pound airplane and we're going to put that airplane in an 80 degree bank. Well, that would be 5.747 load factor. And so that 1,500 pound airplane uh, now weighs 86. And uh, I need to speak more clearly. The weight hasn't changed. The lift generated would be 8,600 pounds, which would probably damage the airplane. Um, related to this discussion is the discussion of whether the airplane falls into the normal um, category, the utility category, or the aerobic category, um, <clears throat> acrobatic, 
acrobatic category. I don't have those numbers in front of me, but they have maximum allowances for positive and negative load factor. So, and um, you can look those up. They will be in another lesson, but that deals with the certification of airplanes and what load factor they can and can't handle. So we could look, uh, we could look up for like an acrobatic airplane um, and see what the load factor is. And I bet it's pretty high. Maybe 5 G's would not be enough to damage. Uh, probably not. But with a normal category airplane like uh, the light trainer that, that you're likely training in, it would be an issue. Uh, let's do one more. We can just do one more of these out of the book. So airplane weighs 4,500 pounds. So 4,500. And the bank is a, it's a 45 degree bank angle. So we can look here. Let's see 45 is somewhere between 1 and 2. We can come over here and get it exactly. It's uh, 1.414. So 1.414. And that's going to give us 63.63. And so the answers for this is question 47 in the book. You got 4,500, 6,750, or 7,200. And we came up with 63.63. And so answer B is correct. And you can see that sometimes the numbers aren't going to be exact. you got to be in the ballpark. But the other two answers are several hundred pounds away. This one is within um, three or four hundred pounds. So that's the discussion on load factor. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.